March 18, 1899, Volume 2, Charity is Simple. This morning, my beloved Jesus continued to make himself seen from within my heart, and in seeing him a little bit more cheered, I plucked up courage, and I began to pray that he would not send so many chastisements. And Jesus told me, What moves you, O oh my daughter, to pray me not to chastise creatures? Immediately I answered, because they are your images, and if creatures should suffer, you yourself would suffer. And Jesus, heaving a sigh, told me, Charity is so dear to me that you cannot comprehend it. Charity is simple, just like my being, which, though immense, is yet most simple, so much so that there is no place which it does not penetrate. So charity is. Being simple, it diffuses everywhere. It has regard for no one, whether a friend or an enemy, whether a citizen or a stranger, it loves all. March 18, 1902, Volume 4, Restlessness Makes Jesus Suffer. This morning I felt restless because of the absence of my adorable Jesus. So having received communion, as soon as he came into my heart, I began to speak so much nonsense. My sweet good, it is not for me to remain calm when you do not come. In seeing me calm, you take advantage and do not give a thought to coming. So it is necessary to take some steps, otherwise one cannot manage. On hearing me, he moved in my interior and made himself seen in the act of smiling. For he heard my nonsense and he told me you then want me to suffer in fact knowing that if you are restless i suffer more and not trying to be calm is the same as wanting me to suffer more and i insane as i was said it is better that you suffer because from your very suffering you can have more compassion for my suffering Besides, the suffering that comes to you from sin, that one is ugly. It is enough that it's not that one. And Jesus, but if I come, you force me not to chastise, when chastisements are so very necessary. In that case, then, you would have to conform to me in wanting what I want. And I, remembering what I had seen in the past days, said, what chastisements? Do you want to make people die? Let them die. They must come to you and to their fatherland anyway, as long as you save them. What I want is that you free them of contagious diseases. The Lord did not pay attention to me, and he disappeared. As he came back, he made himself seen always with his back to the world, and as much as I tried, I could not manage to have him look at it. And when I wanted to induce him by force, he said, Do not force me, otherwise you force me to deprive you of my presence. So I was left with a remorse, and I feel I have committed many defects. March 18, 1903, Volume 4, One Who Does the Will of God Chooses the Optimum. This morning, as the confessor asked me whether I felt the desire to suffer, I answered him, yes. But I felt more tranquil and enjoyed more peace and contentment when I wanted nothing but what God wants. Therefore, I wanted to stop in it. Then afterwards, when blessed Jesus came, he told me, My daughter, you have chosen the optimum, because one who is always in my will binds me in such a way as to make a continuous virtue come out of me, which keeps her in a continuous attitude toward me, so much so that she forms my food, and I hers. On the other hand, even if the soul did great, holy, and good things, since it is not virtue that came out of me, 
It cannot be an enjoyable food for me, because I do not recognize it as a work of my will. March 18, 1917, Volume 12, Effects of Fusing Oneself in Jesus. I was praying, fusing all of myself in Jesus, and I wanted each thought of Jesus in my power in order to have life in each thought of creature and to repair with the same thought of Jesus, and so with all the rest. And my sweet Jesus told me, my daughter, my humanity on earth did nothing but connect each thought of creature with my own. So each thought of creature was reflected in my mind, each word in my voice, each heartbeat in my heart, each action in my hands, each step in my feet, and so with all the rest. With this I offered divine reparations to the Father. Now all that I did upon earth, I continue in heaven, and as the creatures think, their thoughts pour into my mind. As they look, I feel their glances in mine. Therefore a continuous electricity flows between me and them, just as the members are in continuous communication with the head. And I say to the Father, My Father, I am not the only one who is praying, repairing, satisfying, appeasing you. But there are other creatures who do within me whatever I do. Even more with their suffering, they make up for my humanity, which is glorious and incapable of suffering. By fusing herself in me, the soul repeats all that I did and continue to do. What will be the contentment of these souls who lived their lives in me, embracing together with me all creatures and all reparations, when they will be with me in heaven? They will continue their lives in me, and as the creatures will think or will offend me with their thoughts, these will be reflected in their minds, and they will continue the reparations which they did on earth. They will be together with me, the sentries of honor before the divine throne. And as creatures on earth will offend me, they will do opposite acts in heaven. They will guard my throne. They will have the place of honor. They will be the ones who will comprehend me the most, the most glorious. Their glory will be completely fused in mine, and mine in theirs. Therefore, may your life on earth be completely fused in mine. Do not do any act without making it pass into me. And every time you will fuse yourself in me, I will pour new graces and new light in you. And I will become the vigilant sentry of your heart in order to keep any shadow of sin far away from you. I will guard you as my own humanity, and I will command the angels to surround you like a crown, that you may be sheltered from everything and everyone. March 18, 1919, Volume 12 In his conception, Jesus conceived all souls, their pains, and their deaths. Continuing in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus, making himself seen, drew me into the immensity of his most holy will, in which he was showing, as though in act, his conception in the womb of the celestial mamma. Oh God, what an abyss of love! My sweet Jesus told me, Daughter of my will, come to take part in the first deaths and pains that my little humanity received from my divinity in the act of my conception. As I was conceived, I conceived all souls with me, past, present, and future, as my own life. And I also conceived all the pains and deaths which I had to suffer for each one of them. I had to incorporate everything within me, souls, pains, and deaths, 
that each one was to suffer in order to say to the father my father look no longer at the creature but only at me in me you will find everyone and i will satisfy for all as many pains as you want i will give them to you do you want me to suffer death for each one i will suffer it i accept everything provided you give life to all this is why a divine power and will were needed in order to give me so many deaths and pains and a divine power and will to make me suffer and since in my will all souls and all things are in act not in an abstract way or by intention as some might think rather i kept all of them identified with me in reality and with me they formed my very life in reality i died for each one and suffered the pains of all it is true that it took a miracle of my omnipotence the prodigy of my immense will without my will my humanity could not have found and embraced all souls nor could it die so many times so as my little humanity was conceived it began to suffer alternating pains and deaths all souls were swimming in me as if inside an immense sea forming the members of my members the blood of my blood the heart of my heart how many times did my mama taking the first place in my humanity feel my pains and my deaths and she died together with me how sweet it was for me to find the echo of my love in the love of my mama these are profound mysteries in which the human intellect not able to understand well seems to get lost therefore come into my will and take part in the deaths and the pains that i suffered from the moment of my conception from this you will be able to better understand what i tell you i am unable to say how but i found myself in the womb of my queen mama where i could see the tiny little infant jesus but though tiny he contained everything a dart of light flashed from his heart into mine and as it penetrated into me i felt it giving me death and as it came out life came back to me each touch of that dart produced a most sharp pain such that i felt undone and dying in reality then through the same touch I felt I was receiving life again. But I do not have the right words to express myself. Therefore, I stop here. March 18th, 1922, Volume 14. Sin chains the soul and hampers her in doing good. The rest which God and the creature give to each other. I was accompanying my sweet Jesus in the pains of his passion, and he, making himself seen, told me, My daughter, sin chains the soul and hampers her in doing good. Her mind feels the chain of sin and is hindered from comprehending what is good. Her will feels the chain that binds her and feels numb, and instead of wanting good, it wants evil. Her desire, chained, feels its wings with which to fly to God, being clipped. Oh, how I feel compassion at the sight of man chained by his own sins. This is why the first pain I wanted to suffer in my passion were the chains. I wanted to be bound in order to release man from his own chains. Those chains which I suffered as soon as they touched me, turned into chains of love which in touching man burned up and snapped his chains and bound him with my loving chains my love is operative 
It cannot be without operating. Therefore I prepared for all and for each one that which is needed in order to rehabilitate them, heal them, and embellish them anew. I did everything so that, if the soul makes up her mind, she may find everything ready and at her disposal. So I keep my chains ready to burn up her own, the shreds of my flesh to cover her wounds and adorn her with beauty, my blood to give her life again. I have everything ready. I keep all that is needed in store for each one, but my love wants to give itself. It wants to operate. I feel a restlessness, an irresistible force, which gives me no peace if I do not give. And do you know what I do? When I see that no one takes, I concentrate my chains, the shreds of my flesh, my blood, in one who wants them and who loves me. And I stud her with beauty, bejeweling her all over with the chains of my love. I increase a hundredfold the life of grace for her, so my love pours itself out and calms itself. While he was saying this, I saw his chains, the shreds of his flesh, his blood, running onto me, and he amused himself in applying them upon me and in bejeweling me all over. How good is Jesus! May he be always blessed! Then afterwards he returned and added, My daughter, I feel the need that the creature rest in me and I in her. But do you know when the creature rests in me and I in her? When her intelligence thinks of me and comprehends me. She rests in the intelligence of her creator and that of the creator finds rest in the created mind. When the human will unites with the divine will, the two wills embrace and rest together. If human love rises above all created things and loves only its God, what a beautiful rest do God and the creature find reciprocally? One who gives rest finds it. I become her bed and keep her in the sweetest sleep, clasped in my arms. Therefore come and rest in my bosom. March 18, 1923, Volume 15 The words of Jesus on his divine will are bonds of indissoluble union with the soul and give her the knowledge and the possession of the goods it contains. I was abandoning all of myself in the most holy will of my sweet Jesus, even though I felt I was without him and as though pierced in my heart. And I thought to myself, why did he speak to me so much about his eternal volition, if now he has left me? Rather, his very words are piercings for my heart, which tear it to shreds. And even though I am resigned, and I kiss those very piercings that lacerate me and the hand that pierces me still, I feel vividly that everything is over for me. But while I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus moved in my interior and throwing his arms around my neck told me, My daughter, my daughter, do not fear. Nothing is over between you and me. Your Jesus is always your Jesus for you. The strongest thing which binds the soul is to dissolve her will and mine. How can I leave you? And besides, if I have spoken to you so much about my will, it is many bonds of indissoluble union that I have placed between you and me. In speaking to you, my eternal volition bound your little will with the bonds of my eternal will for each word I have spoken to you. Moreover, you must know that in creating man, our first supreme will was that he should live in our volition and having to live in it, he was to take what is ours so as to live at our expense, repaying our will with as many divine acts or as many human acts as he would do in our will. 
this in order to enrich him with all the goods which our will contains. But man wanted to live in his will, at his own expense, and therefore he exiled himself from his fatherland and lost all these goods. So my goods remained without heirs. They were immense and nobody possessed them. Therefore my humanity came to take possession of all these goods by living every instant in this eternal volition. It wanted to live always at its expense, being born, growing, suffering, working, and dying in the eternal kiss of the supreme volition. And as I kept living in it, I was given the possession of many unemployed goods which ungrateful man had put into oblivion. Now, my daughter, if my infinite wisdom has spoken to you so much about my will, it was not just to give you simple news. No, no, but to make known to you the living in my will and the goods it contains. And as you walk your way in it, you take possession of it. My humanity did everything. It took possession of everything, not for myself alone, but to open the doors to my other brothers. I have waited for so many centuries. Many generations have gone by, and I will still wait. But man must return to me on the wings of my will, from which he came. Therefore, you, be the first to be welcomed, and let my words be a spur for you to take possession of it, as well as chains which bind you so tightly as to never let you go out of my will. March 18, 1937, Volume 34 The Divine Will Makes a Gift of All Its Works to the One Who Lives in It the breath of God in his works and in all the holy works of the creatures. The divine will makes itself supplier of what the creature lacks. I was doing my round in the divine fiat in order to follow, for as much as is possible for me, its divine acts, that is to say, the creation and all the holy acts of the creatures not excluding those of my celestial mother, nor those of my dear Jesus. But the great thing was that as I retraced them, they made themselves mine. The divine volition gave them to me, and I, as if I would have a right over everything, offered them to my creator as the most beautiful homage, the most intense love, the most profound adoration to he who had created me. I felt myself invested by the sun, by the sky with all the stars, by the wind, by everything. Everything was mine because everything was of the divine will. I remained amazed, and my sweet Jesus, repeating his brief little visit, told me, My blessed daughter, why do you marvel? You must know that everything that is holy and good belongs to my fiat, because it wants to give everything to the one who lives together with it. An exchange on both parts happens. The creature does not want to have anything for herself. She wants to give it everything. And my volition wants to give everything to her, even itself. More so, because the creation, the redemption, the Queen of Heaven, all the good and holy acts, are nothing other than breath of God. He breathed and said fiat, and he created the whole creation. He breathed and he called the Most Holy Virgin to life. He breathed and he made the Word descend to earth. He breathes and gives life to the good works of all creatures. Now one who lives in mine does nothing other than retrace all his works in order to find his divine breath, so as to bring them back to God as fruits and power of the breath of her creator. Oh, how glorified, loved he feels, 
because he finds in the works offered to him by the creature his breath, his own life. And however many times she goes around in his works, so many times he feels himself given his life, his glory, his love again. And oh, how he waits for these presents, because he feels given again what he has given. He feels re-loved in his works, as he has loved. He feels his love, his power recognized. And so much is the divine complacency that he pours torrents of love and of graces toward the one who has known his works and his love. This is why, my daughter, my will, as the creature lives together with it, so with a love without equal, it makes a gift of everything that it possesses. It renders her mistress of everything, because if one thing is not hers, she does not have the right of being able to give it to the others. Therefore, making a gift of everything to her, my volition gives her a large field in order to be able to give to her creator and to receive his exchange doubled. But then this gift becomes made when she recognizes our works. She appreciates them. She loves them. Love gives her the right of making hers what belongs to my eternal volition. If my volition could not make a gift to the creature of everything that is its, it would feel itself hindered in love, separated in its works, because it would not be able to say, what is mine is yours, what I do, you do. This my will would not support, it would say, let us live together to form the same life. And not being able to give her everything, this is impossible for my love. It would be as if I could not entrust myself to her. No, no, I want to give everything to the one who lives in my will. You must know that so much is the love of my fiat toward the one who lives in it, that if the creature, not by will, but by weakness and impotence, does not follow all the acts of my volition, or yet, by necessity of suffering, or of other things, her life does not flow in it. So much is its love, that it does what the creature must do. It supplies for her in everything. It recalls its aptitude, its order, its love, such that the soul rouses herself and resumes her life together and this in order that the human life would be neither divided nor separated from it. If it would not do this, the divine void would remain. But its love does not tolerate it, and it acts as supplier for what the creature lacks, because it wants that its divine life must not ever lack in her, but must be continuous. Can greater love be given? that he arrives at saying, Courage, do not fear. Come with all trust to live with me. Trust in me. And if you were to lack always flowing in my fiat, I will commiserate you and will take the operating part that you cannot do. And I will supply for you in everything. The kingdom of my volition is kingdom of love, of trust, and of accord on both parts. End of March 18th Fiat